What's up developers? Today we're going to be adding a procedural lowered animation to our character when the equipped weapon is close to a wall. The idea here is to avoid clipping with the walls and in all honesty to show you how to make some more procedural stuff because it looks really cool. That's basically what we're going to do in this one. So let's just start. First thing we're going to do is I'm just going to come up with what the lowered or kind of the whatever the wall pose is going to look like. And the way we're going to do that is just like last tutorial, I'm going to go to the animation blueprint, the character animation blueprint, which again, for this project, we have an FPS tutorial core and then ABP character. I already have it open right here. Now I'm going to copy the functionality we made for crouching. Um, by the way, this is the crouching. I'm going to take that just the transform modify bone. I'm going to copy it and I'm just going to place it somewhere where it's going to run for everything. In our case, that's going to be right here, right before the fabric nodes. And I keep saying we should clean this up and I don't, but uh, we really will. I promise we will. Um, all right. So let's compile. That will basically create the crouch pose. We don't want the crouch pose, obviously. What we want is more of a lowered pose. So there's a few ways we can go about this. Honestly, just make whatever you want. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate it a little bit and then rotate it down a little bit. Maybe make sure the elbow doesn't do anything weird. Um, and then maybe move it back a little bit. Let's see how that looks from first person. I can barely see the weapon. That's great. Uh, that will definitely not clip. Let's just go with this for now. So I'm going to unhook this again. I'm going to comment this. I'm just pressing C, by the way, and I'm just going to say lowered. And that is perfectly great. Now compile. Now we need to somehow be able to tell that the character is close to a wall. The way we're going to do this is we're going to use something called a line trace, which basically means we're going to shoot a line from the character forward and then see if it hits anything. That's the way we're going to check. We're going to do that in the camera's direction. So let's go do that. We're going to do this in the character blueprint in case we ever need to check this for anything else. So for example, if we were shooting and we might want to stop the character from being able to shoot if it's in front of a wall or something of that sort, um, then this would be great to have in here because that's where all the shooting functionality is going to be in. So let's, uh, let's start. We're going to do this in the tick event. We're going to need to run this pretty much every frame. There are better ways to do this, and I'm sure some of you, if you're already very experienced, you will want to murder me for doing this in tick. But for now, let's just do it here. Um, I'm going to do a very quick cleanup here. <laughs> um, and then we're going to do the line trace. Now, to do a line trace, I'm just going to right click, as always, to pop up the actions menu. And then in here, I'm going to search for line trace. You're going to get a lot of options in our case the thing we're going to use is line trace by channel and you're going to get this very big complicated action i'm going to plug it in now it's going to ask us for a start location and an end location these are the kind of the start of the line and the end of the line for us the start of the line is going to be the camera's location that's basically where we're looking from so that's our camera so let's get let's just say get location in our case it's going to be get world location for the camera we're going to plug that into the start and our end location is just going to be from the camera we just want to end like really far forward from the camera so even if the camera is rotated in some weird direction obviously it wouldn't be only the camera that is rotated but this would take into account whatever rotation we have um we want it to basically go forward wherever we're looking so the way to do that is we're just going to take this camera's world location, right? We're going to go to the camera and say, get forward vector. We've done this before with the character. When we were moving, we got the forward vector. So this is just going to give us a world space forward. So we're going to say, get the camera's location plus this forward. So we're going to move forward from the camera's direction, but we need to move like a certain amount just so it's not only one unit far from the camera. If we added those two, we would basically only be tracing until here, which is not even getting out of the character. So that's not great. So we're going to multiply this forward vector by some really big number. Um, it auto converted it to a 
vector. Oh, I guess nowadays in UE5, that's how it is. Well, all you need to do is basically multiply this by a really big number. So I'm just going to say something like 5,000. This is not actually that big. Um, we'll, we'll debug it in a moment and you'll see it, but let's just try this. We'll put this in the end. We can ignore pretty much everything else. The only thing I'll do is in draw debug type, I'm going to say for one frame. This will let us see the line trace we're, we're doing. We're only one frame. That's enough because we're doing it every frame. So we'll see it every frame. Now, if I compile and save and go to the game, you can see that there is a little red dot. And in fact, if I eject from the character, you can see that from the camera, we are tracing a line forward in the camera's direction. And the distance it's going to is actually pretty long. Okay, 5K was a lot longer than I expected. We can make that number a little smaller. We don't really need to check if the character should lower their gun if, if we're heading right here. Um, so in fact, let's, let's just make that lower. Instead of 5K, let's make it like 1K. So just 1,000. And compile. Okay, so now... That might actually still be a little bit too long. It, it is. Let's all right. Let's make it even lower, 200 or 300. That should now be enough, hopefully. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. So it might it might even need to be lower than that. But for now, let's just leave it at that. You can see that whenever that big red square pops up, that's basically when we're hitting something. Uh, so if I kind of go here, you'll see that we're not actually hitting anything. But for now, we'll use this. You would want to make that number smaller, probably. And now, whenever we have this hit something, which is going to return true right here, we are just going to store that as a variable and then get it from the animation blueprint. And again, just like we did with the crouching before and the aiming, we're going to blend to a pose that has that, or we're just going to blend in the modification of the bone that we did before. So let's create a variable. I'm just going to duplicate crouching and call it like Lord, for example, or... or close to wall just to be even more clear and i will set this right here and i will set it to the return value of this which again is going to be true if we hit something then i'm going to go to the animation blueprint and inside here we can do a few things actually um, one thing we can do is we can just take this whole node plug it back in the lowered pose um, naturally, once we plug it back in, it's going to immediately go to the lowered pose. We don't want that. If I click on the node, though, and I scroll down to the bottom, you will see that there's an alpha input type right here, and it's set to float. This is what, what's showing up if I expose this. That is the value. Now, if I set this value to something like 0.5 and then compile, you will see that it's only applying half of the pose. And then if I set it to zero, it's only applying kind of the normal idle pose. So it's not applying this node at all. We can do, we can actually use this and there is an even better way to use this, which is if we go to the alpha input type and change it to bool, we can just set this to a boolean and if it's enabled, it's going to go to that pose and if it's not, it's just going to go back to idle pose or whatever comes from here. So just ignore this completely is basically what it's going to do. So we, we can really use that. If I duplicate our crouching value and I call this close to wall value. And then I use this value as the enabled value. Naturally, we're still not updating this value anywhere. So we still need to go to the event graph. And from our character, I'm going to go get close to wall. And then I'm going to assign our close to wall value right here to this value. Now, every time we are close to a wall, this will get set to enabled and we will play the lowered pose. Let's check that out in game. So I'm not playing the lower pose. I can play the aim. I can crouch. I can do everything I want to do. But if I aim at a at anything, you can see that we are now using the lowered pose. Now, naturally, there is absolutely no blending going on. So that is not great. We can fix this. I'll show you a few ways to fix it, in fact. And before that, even before that, I will fix the fact that it is still aiming very far. So... Let's again fix this. We're going to go 100 only. And again, try it. Now we're not going to be able to do that from here. Now I, I need to really get close to a wall, which is great. Now to fix it not blending, I can go to the transform modify bone node. And at the bottom here, we will have some blend settings. 
right here, you can mess around with the blend times. So for example, I can set it to 0.3 and 0.3. And just like we had before, I can set it to sinusoidal in and out, compile, and then go back. And now you'll see that we really get a blend. Now, a few issues with this approach, if I aim and go into this, I am technically still aiming. And in fact, you can see that if I click, it's still doing things. Same for crouching. It does still play the crouch. So instead of this, what I will do is I will do something, although this approach is perfectly reasonable, we do want to avoid all those animations playing in the background because that looks a little bit weird. So what I will do is I will ensure that none of these play when we are in that state so we're going to make it a state just like we did kind of with the crouching right here we made it its own whole thing we're going to do just that for this too so let's unhook it let's kind of go back to what we had before we created that let's drag it down here and what i'm going to do since this is going to kind of override everything so aiming crouching we don't want any of that to show up we only want this to show up what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another blend poses by bool right here. And we're going to blend between our idle pose or whatever comes from this, from this result. So whatever, either crouching or aiming or whatever else we have in there, I'm going to blend between that and this lowered pose. Now, granted, do remember that if you do just that, you will get a weird result. And in fact, we'll look at it now. Also, we do not need to use a value here at all. We can just set it to enabled all the time. And we will use this close to wall value right here to blend between the idle aim and crouch and this. And now we can set values here. So 0.3 and 0.3, for example, again, same kind of blend as before. And we can blend between them. Now you will notice I think close to wall is uh, false at the moment. So, oh, actually, we, we do want them to be reversed. Whenever we are close to a wall, we want to go into here. Now, with close to wall but false, everything works properly. If I go to true, you will see that nothing is playing. And that is because, again, this just offsets a bone. So you have to take that into account. We're not doing anything with that bone. So we still need to take our idle loop and apply it and then apply all of our modification. And now, if I make close to wall true, we should actually be seeing that, which we are not. Okay. That's a bit weird. Okay, just set it to float i guess it did something a little bit weird there for some reason it was not setting itself to work which is very odd but just set it to float and get it back to one and it will work fine so that that will be our lower post and now if i center that and we compile this entire blueprint i will set back close to wall value by default you can do that either from here by clicking on it or right here in the edit defaults and setting it right here and i play if i go get close to a wall you're gonna see that it's applying the entire pose which is very far we can mess around with the pose a little bit later but even if i try to aim or do anything you're gonna see that nothing really changes you can see that in the shadow and a better way to show this would be if we Go to edit preview, click close to wall, and now we edit this pose a little bit. Obviously, the shoulder is doing something a little bit wacky there. Uh, we can solve that. In fact, let's quickly reset that. And then rotate it. And we can move it forward a little bit, maybe. There we go. And I will still move it a little bit to the right. And a little bit up. 
a little bit forward so we can still see the weapon okay yeah that's basically pretty close to what i want a little bit back and there we go so now we have a lowered pose now if i click aim you're gonna see that i'm not aiming but if i go out here i will aim i'm still holding aim and then if i crouch i am properly crouching i go into the lowered pose and everything seems to be working properly now we're we're pretty we're pretty set with this in the next tutorial we will add movement animations finally and i'm really excited about that um i hope i'll see you there and uh yeah i hope you enjoyed that i'll see you in the next one